So today we're going to be talking about starting something new. And a lot of you know, or some of you know anyway, that I play elite poker uh, on occasion. <clears throat> and even though I haven't played in several years, I'm going to be going back and playing this year. I'll be playing the World Series of Poker some. And so I'm getting back into that. But a few of you have asked, okay, how did you ever get into that? So we're going to talk about my journey playing poker and how you can embrace starting something brand new. Coming up next. Hi everybody, my name is Dee Burks and this is Retirement Rescue. And one of the things we're going to talk about today is starting something new. I talk about this all the time because when you're going into either planning for retirement, going into semi-retirement, or maybe you're in full retirement, it is a great time to embrace learning new things. And it doesn't matter if those things are in the creative arts, like painting, writing, um, doing woodworking, something of that nature, gardening, homesteading, or if it's something uh, that you want to get out and enjoy, like golf, or tennis, or maybe playing bridge, or dominoes, or pool, or, like in my case, poker. Now, one of the things I love about poker is I just love to play the game. It's a quiet card game. Uh, you can play it anywhere. I grew up in Texas. Everybody plays in Texas. That's just a thing. We play No Limit Hold'em. You can find a game almost anywhere. Uh, home games. I played in a home game uh, where I lived in Texas for more than 10 years uh, with a group, same group of people. And we all uh, improved and got better, but mostly it was just fun. I first learned to play poker when I was a little kid. Honestly, I don't even remember how old I was. I know we were living at the ranch. My dad was a ranch foreman, and he taught us to play poker. I had to be probably first or second grade. We played with pennies or with matchsticks or whatever we had. Well, as an adult, I really didn't get back into playing poker until really the poker boom. You know, uh, Chris Moneymaker, who was a just a regular guy, an accountant uh, from Tennessee, won the World Series of Poker, and that was about the time they had started televising poker heavily. And when he won the World Series of Poker, I think it made people realize, oh my goodness, anybody could get in there and win millions of dollars. And at the same time, there was also the beginning of online poker. You could play online. So a lot of people, even the ones who didn't live near a casino, could play poker. And a lot of people got into it. And I could, at that time, could play poker online a little bit, so I started doing that. My last husband and I would frequently go to Vegas. Um, and one of the reasons we would go to Vegas so much was because I could sit down at a poker table and I could make enough money to pay for the trip. That was a big deal. Um, my last husband was, I don't want to say he was tight, but he was tight, y'all. <laughs> like tight. Uh, especially when it came to things like, you know, spending the money on trips. But Vegas was an easy one because he knew I would make the money back. So it wasn't like it was even an expense. So the very first time I decided to play live poker in Vegas was at the Bellagio. And I was scared. I think you'll see a lot of people, uh, no matter where it's at, standing outside of poker rooms or maybe just inside the door, kind of watching. They're hovering. I was standing in that crowd a lot, so I wasn't quite sure, you know, I could just sit down. All these people seemed so good at the game. Was I good enough? You know, you have all those uh, insecurities, and that's true with everything. You don't want to make a fool out of yourself. Um, you, you don't want to just, you know, completely lose all your money, especially when you are gambling. You got to be careful. But I finally went in and sat down and started playing. I will tell you that I have never had a really bad experience at all playing in a large casino in Vegas. People have been very nice, very accommodating. Um, I think there's this perception that if you sit down and you don't really know what you're doing, you're going to be picked on. And I'm like, no, no, they're not going to pick on you. Don't get me wrong, they'll want to make money off of you, but they're not going to pick on you. <laughs> but honestly, everyone has been so accommodating. Uh, even in those first years, and it was early on here again in the poker boom, and there weren't a lot of women playing, especially at the Bellagio. The people who ran that poker room were always very nice. 
Um, they always came up and said, hey, we, we're glad you're playing here. Is there anything we can do? If you have any problems, let us know. Very nice, very accommodating. They want women to play. The games tend to be a little bit more civil. People don't get near as upset, generally speaking. When there's a mix, I tend to uh, be a little more polite, which is always appreciated. And these uh, poker games in Vegas are a huge international mix. You'll have people from Europe, people from uh, Southeast Asia, people from Australia, all over the world. And even within that mix, it is such a pleasant experience. So I really enjoy it. Another thing I really love is they have made all of the poker rooms non-smoking. I really love that. When that happened about 09, 2010, somewhere around there, most all of them went to non-smoking. It was so nice. And now many of them are completely closed off from the casino. They're actually in a separate room or separate space, which is really great. You don't have all of that um, casino noise. You don't have the smoke. It's really pleasant. A great way to spend time in Vegas, in my opinion, of course. And one of the cool things about uh, poker specifically, you can sit down and play with the most elite players in the world. Most of the time, the only place you're going to do that is a tournament because when they play cash games where they're just playing for cash as opposed to a tournament, they're playing in much higher stakes games. Games I wouldn't get into because I couldn't afford it, honestly. But when you're playing a tournament, everybody plays the same amount. You get the same number of chips and you play down to the, the one with all the chips. That's how it works. So, but in a tournament, you could be sitting across from people who have won awards and uh, multiple bracelets in the World Series and just completely famous poker players. And you're sitting there playing with them just like they are. You get two cards, they get two cards, in No Limit Hold'em. You play the same game. It is really the only environment I can think of where that's the case. I mean, if you play golf, it's not like you can walk out onto the green at the Masters and play with Tiger Woods. That's not going to happen. <laughs> That's really not going to happen. You have to really prove yourself to get into those elite golf games. But in poker, you don't have to prove anything. You don't have to prove that you can do math. I can't. You don't have to, to prove that you can play the game. You can be a total newbie. You just have to put down the money and be willing to play the game. That's it. And I love that aspect of it. Now here pretty quick, I'm going to be going out to Vegas. Actually, by the time y'all see this, I'll probably be back. But <laughs> I'm doing a little practice run. It's been about three years since I, since I sat down and played at the World Series of Poker. Um, the first time I played at the World Series was in 2009. Actually, I bought this jacket, uh, World Series of Poker, in 2009. I've had it ever since. High quality, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> I've had it ever since. Uh, but that was the first year I played. The first time I sat down and played a World Series of Poker tournament. And they have like 80 tournaments during the World Series of Poker. But I sat down and played a No Limit Hold'em tournament and I made the money. And that really gave me the confidence that I could play at that level. Uh, not all the time necessarily. And I don't all the time. But I could step in on occasion and do well enough to get my money back and make a little bit. I was sitting across from Phil Helmuth for a few hours at that table, so truly I was sitting down with some of the elite players of poker. And I still made the top 10%. In order to make the money or get paid for a tournament, you usually have to get into at least the top 10%. And that tournament had like several thousand people in it. And I felt like by getting into that top 10% that I was really proving to myself that I could do this. And so I have continued to play. And now that it's opened back up, I want to go back this year. Um, I've taken the ensuing time to really study up and learn, to uh, work on my skill sets. And we'll see how I do. I may not do any good. I may do great. We'll just see. But it's the challenge that's the thing. And when you go into retirement, I think it is good to have those things that still challenge you. They cha challenge you mentally to stay up with the game, because you have to. Um, they also give you that, that sense of accomplishment. When you're able to stay in there and hang with some of the, the elite players of the world, it really gives you that, that feeling of accomplishment. And that's what it's all about. And I love getting in there and playing. Just playing the game is the funnest part. But I want to really encourage each of you to step out there 
this year, next year, as soon as you retire, try something new. Last year was the first year I crewed a hot air balloon. And that was a new experience that was absolutely stunning. Definitely a once in a lifetime thing. In 2019, I took my first oil painting class. I sucked at it, <laughs> but I got better. And now my skill set has tremendously improved. So whatever it is that you think you might like to do, maybe you're a little bit afraid to do, step out there and do it. Because honestly, the more you put yourself out there doing those things, proving to yourself that you can actually do them, the more courage it gives you to have this full, rich life. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.